in anchor modeling we have a naming convention that aims to give you uh, unique names for all the entities that you have here in, in uh, your model. Uh, we also, it imposes some bounds on the names, but um, you get unique names and they also contain some semantics. So from a name you can derive, for example, what type of entity it is, if it's an anchor, if it's a, an attribute, a tie or a knot. And um, you can also see some other things from the name, for example, to which anchor uh, an attribute is connected. So let, let's look at an anchor. Uh, here we have the actor anchor and as you can see the name consists of two parts you have AC for the um, which we call a mnemonic followed by a descriptive name which is actor uh, so the descriptive name is something that should be uh, humanly understandable and uh, you have the mnemonic here which is uh, a two-letter mnemonic for anchors and these mnemonics have to be unique within the model uh, so, for example, if I take this um, uh, anchor up here and try to give it the same mnemonic, uh, I will get an error message uh, telling me that I have to change this to uh, something else because it's not unique. Uh, so that's the, um, uh, how the names of anchors are made. Uh, and if you look at the names of attributes, you can see that uh, the full name uh, is the uh, name of the anchor to which it's connected followed by a mnemonic for the attribute and the descriptive name of an anchor and the descriptive name of the attribute. Uh, so if I edit the attribute I can set the descriptive name and the mnemonic and the mnemonic of an attribute is a three-letter mnemonic and uh, this only has to be unique uh, within the same anchor so it's possible for me to have uh, a uh, GEN uh, attribute on another uh, anchor. Uh, we also have the the uh, knots. Knots have a three-letter mnemonic and this is the same as for anchors so they have to be unique within the whole model. Uh, and we have uh, then we have the ties uh, and looking at the tie you can see that uh, this tie is connecting two anchors, the actor anchor and the performance anchor. And looking at the tie you can see that uh, you have the two uh, mnemonics from the anchors in the name. You have the PE for performance and AC for the uh, actor anchor. Uh, but you also have something else here. You can see that there are two uh, other words, in and was cost. And you don't set these on the actual tie, but you do it on the edges here. Uh, so what you do here is you describe the roles that these uh, anchors play in the relationship that you're modeling. So in this case, uh, an actor was cost in a performance. Uh, so that defines the, the tie name. Uh, also the tie names have to be uh, unique within the model. So if I try to create um, a, 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 an identical tie here, add tie, it, I mean it's, it's possible to have uh, two ties between uh, uh, like this between the the, the uh, anchors, uh, but then the roles have to differ. So if I in this case have the same uh, roles was cost, uh, and I change this role to in, uh, then I get the error message again saying that um, there is already a tie named uh, this way. So I have to rename one of the roles. Uh, so was cost uh, I don't know before or something. So now I have a different tie than this one, and then it's okay. So that's uh, briefly the naming convention that we use. And um, of course, um, theoretically, you could name your entities anything you would like, but this tool imposes the naming convention that we have chosen.